Welcome to the Media Library of First Baptist Church of Troy, Texas. We hope and pray you receive a blessing from today's message. First Baptist Church of Troy is a Christ-centered, family-friendly church which offers activities for kids, teens, and adults. You can learn more and contact us by visiting fbctroytx.org. Now, here's today's message. We're going to continue on with uh, requests, uh, summer requests that I've been doing. Again, if you have a request uh, over a a passage of Scripture, maybe a topic, uh, maybe a past sermon that I have done that you would like to hear again, uh, put those down. I think Thomas has got something on email that you can send uh, or write it down, hand it to me. And I'm getting, I've got quite a few and I'm going to try to get to as many as I can working through them in that. Uh, but this is one that was from a, a request from a sermon, a past sermon. In fact, uh, I believe if my note is right on this, uh, it was originally done August of 2018. Again, I don't know why people keep up with this stuff, but they some do. Uh, but August 2018, and we're going to be looking at the subject of succeeding at things that don't matter succeeding at things that don't matter. And we'll be coming out of Mark chapter 8, verses 36 through 37. You won't find that in your Bibles. Uh, Please go ahead and do so. Mark chapter 8, verses 36 through 37. Verses 36 through 37 of Mark chapter 8. For what does it benefit a man to gain the whole world, yet lose his life? What can a man give in exchange for his life? Now that's what my translation says. I use the uh, Holman Christian Standard Bible. Uh, That's what it says. But but in reality's sake, the Greek is different. Uh, That word life is actually soul in the Greek. And that, and uh, I like the way the New Living Translation puts it. It says, and what you benefit if you gain the whole world but lose your own soul. If any is anything worth more than your soul. And actually the message is really good. Now the message is a paraphrase. uh, uh, And it says this, what good would it do to get everything you want and lose you, the real you? What could you ever trade your soul for? That's the subject. That's what we're going to be looking at this morning. William Carey said this, I'm not afraid of failure. I'm afraid of succeeding at things that don't matter. And thus, the title of the sermon. And you know, when you think of, when you think of the scripture verses that we just looked at, and, and, and when you think about that quote by, by William Carey, You can't help but realize that we who live in the United States of America have become become obsessed with obtaining things in life that really don't matter. Now think about that. We, we, We strive after these things that really don't matter. I remember, you know, back, uh, back as a teenager, man, there were certain things I had to have. I really wanted those things, man, whatever it took me to do to get them. And I got them. I don't have one of them right now. It mattered all the world to me, and I don't even have them anymore. They've even, I've even thrown them away or they've fallen apart, whatever it may be. And we do things like that. We strive for things. And we give our life for things that in the end really don't matter. We want to succeed at things that in the long run don't matter. If, oh, let me back up there. There we go. The word for soul in those verses that we used is the Greek word psyche. Psyche. To the Greek, the psyche was the essential person. It was what made a person a person. It was was who a person really was uh, or who they were meant to really be. What Jesus is saying here is that in striving 
to gain the things the world says we need, we're losing the essence of who we are meant to be. That's what Jesus is saying. We're losing out on what God meant for us to be. We're losing out on what God meant for our lives. And, and because of the desire to see it in, in things that don't matter, souls are being lost in two different ways. The first way is, and I put up a little early while ago, a soul is lost to the eternity of hell. A soul is lost to the eternity of hell. First, we need to understand, God does not desire anyone to go to hell. God did not create anyone in order for them to go to hell. God doesn't want that. God didn't want that at all. He desired, his desire is that everyone would be in heaven with him. How do I know that? He tells me so. For God loved the world in this way. He gave His one and only Son so that everyone who believes in Him will not perish but have eternal life. First of all, then, I urge that petitions, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings be made for everyone, for kings and all those who are in authority, so that we may lead a tranquil and quiet life in all godliness and dignity. This is good, and it pleases God, our Savior, who wants everyone to be saved you know what every, you know the greek word everyone means everyone no exception he wants everyone to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth for there is one god and one mediator between god and humanity jesus christ himself human who gave himself a ransom for all a testimony at the proper time and then peter says this dear friends don't let this one thing escape you. With the Lord, one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years like one day. The Lord does not delay His promise, as some understand delay, but is patient with you, not wanting any to perish, but all to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. On that day, the heavens will pass away with a loud noise. The elements will burn and be dissolved, and the earth and the works on it will be disclosed. God doesn't desire anyone to go to hell. Yet there are those who are living and who have lived who will find that success in their eyes mean absolutely nothing in eternity. Why? Well, the parable of the rich fool helps us to understand how this happens. Someone in the crowd said to him, the him being Jesus, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. Friend, he said to him, Who appointed me a judge or arbitrator over you? He then told them, Watch out and be on guard against all greed, because one's life is not in the abundance of his possessions. Then he told them a parable. A rich man's land was very productive. He thought to himself, What should I do since I don't have anywhere to store my crops? I will do this, he said. I'll tear down my barns and build bigger ones and store all my grain and my goods there. Then I'll say to myself, you have many goods stored up for many years. Take it easy. Eat, drink, and enjoy yourself. But God said to him, you fool, this very night your life is demanded of you. And the things you have prepared, whose will they be? That's how it is with the one who stores up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. Now, there is a man in this parable who had succeeded in life. He was rich beyond measure. His friends thought he was rich. He himself thought himself as a major success. And yet, he loses his soul. He loses the essence of who God meant for him to be. And in the end, he loses out on eternal life and being there where God meant for him to be. You see, success for this guy was all about him. It was all about his comforts. And he, he was successful in his endeavors. And now he was going to let his success take care of him. What he was doing is he was trusting in his success for his future. In his eyes and in the eyes of his neighbors, because they called him rich, he had succeeded in life. 
Let's face it, today when you see somebody and they, your Bill Gates, your, your Warren Buffetts and folks like that, you go, oh boy, have they succeeded. They've made it in life. Folks, they maybe have made it in this life, but they not, may not make it in the next one. I mean, last rich man here, he was successful. But because of his success, he lost his soul because of what he was going after. He was, he was a success for his short time here on this earth, but he would find failure in eternity. Folks, what is sending people to hell is when they live life with only their time here on this earth in mind. They live life as if this is it. Everything is here. Forgetting that this is just a short stop in the spectrum of time. What is sending people to hell is thinking all that matters is being successful in this life. And they think that any success they have was their doing. They're doing. And they think that they're the ones who are the masters of their domains and that they are the Lord of their souls. And, and in their drive to succeed, life is all about them. It doesn't matter who they step on climbing up that ladder of what they think is success. It's all about self. They have no need for God because in their minds, they have become their own God. Living and striving to succeed only for self. And in so doing, they fail to realize that after this life, there is another life coming that is eternal. This life is a very short life. I don't care. I have done funerals for, for babies that have just been born to people over 100 years old. But you know what? This life is short. Even for 100 years, it's short. Eternity is forever. People strive to succeed in this life, but they succeed in things that don't matter in eternity. And again, they think that they are the Lord of their souls, but, but one day they're going to find out who the real Lord really is, who the Lord of their souls really is. And you know what they're going to find out? It's not them. It's not them. If you're here today, maybe you're listening to us uh, on our live stream or maybe one of our podcasts that we do, and if you're wrapped up in succeeding in this life, one day you're going to stand before God deeply disappointed. Finding out what you were striving for here doesn't mean anything in eternity. If you were succeeding, if you were going out trying to succeed in the world's way. You know, the world's idea of success, the old bumper sticker that years ago used to see on some of the cars is this, he who dies with the most toys wins. You know what, folks? He who dies with the most toys still dies. And as Jesus said, who's all your stuff belong to now? Dead people don't own anything. Think about that. Dead people don't own anything. You can have all the mansions and cars and money in the world. The instant you stop breathing, it ceases to be yours. All that stuff you strive for, for years and years and years, and you thought, this is going to take care of me. No, it's not yours. And it becomes your kids to plunder and to waste. Or it becomes the states, whatever it may be. If that's your philosophy to get the most toys, you're going to find that what you succeed at here on earth, getting the most stuff, isn't going to matter. It won't get you into heaven. You don't have enough money to get into heaven. I say that because think about this. The streets of heaven are made out of what? Gold is pavement. So I don't care how much money you got, it ain't going to do you any good. The possessions you have won't get you into heaven. The looks you have aren't going to get you into heaven. 
The smarts you have isn't going to get you into heaven. There's only one thing that's going to get you into heaven, and His name is Jesus. That's it. If you're living for success on earth, it will bring about your failure in eternity. And failure in eternity is to spend it in a place called hell. Earthly success does not translate into eternal success. Now, well, again, what is the desire of God? The desire of God is that no one perish, but all come to repentance. People who live with the philosophy of getting all they can here on this earth, being successful in the eyes of the world, don't understand that the very reason God created them, them was to be with Him. That's why God created them. He wanted them to be with Him. They don't understand that the true success, that true success is not measured by what you have or what you are in this life, but it is having a relationship with Jesus Christ and being with Him in eternity. That's what true success is. So if you're living so that one day you can say you made it, you'll find out that you made it in things that don't matter. After this brief life here on earth, again, there's another one to come. Again, our scripture. And what do you think, or, or, and what do you benefit if you gain the whole world but lose your own soul? Is anything worth more than your soul if you're totally wrapped up on succeeding in the ways that the world says one is to be a success you'll find out that you're a failure in eternity and you become a failure in eternity when your eternal destination is a place called hell and i i know that no one wants to be a failure but as william carey said it isn't Failure that you should fear, but it is the succeeding at things that don't matter when it comes to your eternal destination. Now, not only is a soul lost to eternity, or to the eternity of hell, but the soul of a believer can also lose out on receiving blessings. So there's souls lost to the eternity of hell, but there's souls of believers who lose out on blessings. A soul loses in receiving the rewards of God. Because of the desire to succeed in things that don't matter, too many Christians are missing out on some eternal blessings. And, and again, uh, I'm not saying you can lose your salvation. Not at all. If you're saved, you're saved. Once saved, always saved. You have the security of the believer. But do you remember what soul meant? It is the essence of who we are. When you accept Jesus Christ as Savior, you are adopted into the family of God. As believers, we are children of of God. When we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, that is now the essence of who we are. We are a child of God. Yes, earthly wise, fleshly wise, I am the child of Andrew and Iva Haynes, but spirit wise, I am a child of God. He's my Father. And that is how people ought to see and know us as a child of God. That should be the essence of who we are. It should be the essence of everything that we do. But we lose that essence when we forget what real success is. Now, let me first say, wanting to succeed is not a sin. I'm not telling you to go home and just sit around and do nothing, okay? And not care. I'm not saying that. It's the reason you want to succeed that can be a sin. Scripture tells us what success should look like, what it needs to be like in the life of a believer. Uh, success is doing good works for the glory of God. For we are His creation, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared ahead of time so that we should walk in them. 
And whatever you do, in word or in deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father through Him. Therefore, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do everything for what? God's glory. God's glory. Those verses teach us how to be a success as believers. We succeed when, when what we do is for God's glory and not ours. God wants us to be, trust me, God wants us to be a success. He wants us to be an eternal success, not just an earthly one. And how we succeed as believers is to make sure everything we do is for the glory of God and that it points to Him. That's different from the world where man wants to succeed for himself and point to himself, look what I did. A believer should want to succeed for God in everything that they do. Young people, you should desire to succeed in making the best grades you can. If you just go along, oh, I'm just a C, I really don't care as long as I get a C, you are not bringing glory to God. You are dishonoring Him. You need to make the best grades you can, not for you, not even for your parents, or to get into college, or to graduate from college. But you desire to do the best you can to succeed for the glory of God, for Him. Adults, you should desire to do the best job you can for your employer if you're an employer you should be do the best you can for your employee and it's not for yourself it's not for your accolades it's not even for the company but it's for the glory of god it's so that he can be lifted up and glorified and when someone comes to you and say man you did a fantastic job what a great deal oh man what a good grade you made man that's the best i've seen you do you go hey it wasn't me. I just did it for God. Now, what are you doing? You're taking it off you and you're pointing it to God. You're witnessing for God. That's what it's all about. In everything we do, we should desire to succeed for the glory of God. And a believer who does this never, ever puts out second-rate work, but only the best, so that God would be glorified through it. A successful believer's life and work lifts up and glorifies God in all that they do. You might be saying, how many times do you need to say this, preacher? Well, how many times do we need to hear it so that we start doing it? The whole essence of the believer should be about honoring the God who saved them. And God wants you to succeed by doing what matters. Living a lifestyle that honors Him. That should be, again, the essence of who we are. The essence. The essence. But the sad truth is there are too many Christians who have lost the essence of who God wants them to be and what God wants them to do by seeking and living for those things that the world says makes a person successful. They've lost the essence of being a child of God and have put the essence on what it looks like to be a child of the world. And by doing that, they lose their witness for the Lord. By doing that, they lose their closeness with the Lord. And in doing so, they lose their rewards, which are called crowns from the Lord. You lose the crown of righteousness given to the believer who's Look forward to the Lord's coming. You lose the incorruptible crown given to the believer who has lived a disciplined, self-controlled life for Christ. You, you, you lose the crown of life that's given to the believer who endures patiently in the trials of life. You lose the crown of glory given to godly leaders who were examples to the flock. You lose the crown of rejoicing given to the believer who leads others to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. You lose those things. And on that day, when those believers who have lost the essence of who they were to be stand before the Lord Jesus Christ and the rewards are being handed out to those who have worked for His glory since they've been saved, they're going to stand there empty-handed. On that day, 
They'll stand before the Lord and they will miss out on the greatest reward of all. And that is hearing these words, well done, good and faithful servant. You see, they didn't succeed in what really mattered. Living and doing the will of the Lord. In that they were a failure. It doesn't matter how much they were success in the world's eyes. They succeeded in things that don't matter in eternity. So the question every one of us needs to ask ourselves is, is this, am I seeking to succeed in the things that really don't matter to God? Or am I seeking to succeed in the things that only matter to the world? In the eternal, one matters and one doesn't. In the eternal, one reaps rewards and one doesn't. And the eternal, one points people to Jesus, and one doesn't. And the eternal, one elicits the praise of God, and one doesn't. What are you going after? Succeeding at things that really don't matter. That's what we need to ask ourselves this morning. Are we trying to succeed in those things that really don't matter in the eternal? Or are we seeking to succeed in those things that don't matter? Have you done what it will take to succeed to get into heaven? The only way you succeed in getting into heaven is by accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You see, true success isn't about you. It never was and it never will be. True success is always about Jesus. So don't let this day pass without you asking Jesus to forgive you of your sins and to make you a part of the heavenly family so that you might live with Him forever. God created you in His image. That's what We're told that in Scripture. And He desires you to be with Him in heaven for an eternity. Again, God didn't create anyone to go to hell. The only way people go to hell is they choose to go there by not accepting Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And that's against what God wants them to do. God says, please, I've done everything you need to get into heaven. All you got to do is accept My Son. That's it. Your sins have been paid for. But folks, you have to choose to say yes. God didn't force you to do so. There's free will in this. The choice is yours. The choice is yours. You choose what you're going to go after and live your life for while you're here on this earth. You can go after the ways of the world and count success the way that the world does, or you can go after the ways of the one whom one day you will stand before and give an accounting of your life to. Again, the Scripture we started with, and what you benefit if you gain the whole world but lose your own soul. Is anything worth more than your soul? God wants you to choose to love and accept Him. You do so for day today and succeed in knowing the forgiveness of your sins and knowing you have a place in heaven. If you're here and you're a believer, is the essence of your lifestyle what God would want it to be? Does it lift up and glorify Him? Does it draw people to Him? Does it witness to the love and to the goodness of God? Does it show that succeeding for Jesus is really what matters in this life? Or do you find yourself desiring to succeed in your eyes and in the eyes of the others and the way the world says success is? Are you afraid of the world calling you a failure and not a success? Or can you say, as William Carey did, I'm not afraid of failure. I'm afraid of succeeding at those things that don't matter. Today, you have that choice to choose which success you're going after. Would you bow your heads in prayer?
Today, if you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, oh, please, don't leave this earth a failure by not having accepted Jesus. Today, would you just pray this simple prayer? Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Today, I'm asking You to come into my life. I'm making You my Lord and my Savior. I'm giving You my life. I want to succeed in the way You want me to succeed. I want to bring glory to You. If you prayed that prayer and you truly meant it, I promise you, according to God's Word, you're saved. And now then, you will go to heaven. Now that's success. That's success. If you prayed that prayer, we invite you during this invitation time to to come down the aisle and take me by the hand and say, Preacher, I prayed that prayer. We will rejoice with you. You're now part of the family. We want to rejoice. Maybe you're here today and you're a believer and you go, you know, I've been striving after things that aren't worth a hill of beans in eternity. I'm striving for the wrong thing. I have been striving for the glory of God. And today, I want to recommit my life to, to God. Maybe you, maybe you want to go down, come down and, and just kneel at the altar here and pray or, or maybe come up to the front pew and sit and pray or, or pray where you'll be standing in a moment or maybe you won't come down and have me pray with you. All I know is if you're not going after the right things, if you know you're not going after what God says is successful, change. Stop what you're doing. Start doing what God wants you to do. Maybe you're here today and you need a church home and God says, man, this is the place I want you to be. I want you to join this place. Be a part of this place so that we can touch the community of Troy, Oenaville, Bell Falls, Pendleton, Bell County, Texas, the United States, the world. That's what God wants us to do. And we invite you to come if God places that on your heart also. Whatever God's put on your heart, you do for Him. If you'll do what God tells you to do, I promise you'll never be a failure. You only fail when you don't do it. Father God, thank You for the Word. Lord, thank You for showing us what success really is. Thank You for helping us to know that You want us to be a success and what that will be in heaven. So Father, I lift up those here and decisions that need to be made. Father, I pray that, uh, Lord, Your Holy Spirit would just find open hearts and open minds and open spirits as He speaks and that our answer to Him will be, yes, whatever You want me to do, I'll do. This is Your time, dear Father. Your time. Your invitation. May we bring glory to You by doing as You call us. For it's in Christ's name I pray. Amen. From the media team at First Baptist Church of Troy, Texas, we want to say thank you for joining us today. If you have additional questions or want to know how you can experience the love of Christ in your life and family, visit us online at fbctroytx.org and send us a message. Thank you and have a wonderful week.